place where it's hardest for it to sink in is in the suburban United States. We're insulated against the natural world. That's what the suburbs really are, a way of making you not notice the natural world very much. And we're insulated in those places by wealth. At least we think we are. Scientists are screaming from the rooftops about us avoiding going over a two degree rise in the temperature of the planet. Why are they so worried about that? If we go over that amount of warming, there are feedback loops in our ecosystems, tipping points that climate change could spin out of control. And it happens like that. There are switches that can be tripped where suddenly you are in brand new territory and you don't even begin to know what to do about it. This is not a linear kind of problem that we're dealing with. This is very much an exponential kind of problem. Right now, we're on the edge of three major tipping points. The first one is the Arctic ice cap. That ice cap's like a mirror. It reflects the sun's light off of the Earth and, and keeps it from warming us up. But as it melts, you get a smaller mirror, which means a warmer Earth, which means more melting, which means more climate change. Another example is Arctic methane. We've got a gigantic amount of methane gas frozen into the tundra, and it is 50 times as toxic as CO2 is. It's CO2 on steroids. As it warms, and that methane gets released, it then causes global warming to get worse, which means it warms more, which means more methane released, which means worse warming, and all of that process spins out of control. Another example of a tipping point is ocean acidification. As you get more CO2 in the atmosphere, a lot of it actually is going into our oceans. And a lot of stuff, like plankton, can't live in that kind of acidified water. And plankton is the basis of the food chain. If the plankton die, we lose the whole ocean ecosystem. These kinds of feedback loops and tipping points are what keep me up at night, that we will hit one before we're able to turn things around. Even if we went cold turkey today because of the time lags in our climate system, we've already signed up for things that we can't see yet. We live in a razor thin livable universe. Just a few kilometers below my feet, it's too hot to live just a few kilometers above my head, the air is too thin to breathe. It's not about a few more droughts and a few more storms. It's about a catastrophic shift in this fragile balance of our biosphere that threatens everything we love. 